Welcome to O-State Daily. It has been a minute, but Chase and I are back, and we have a lot to talk to Chase about, I should say, Chase Witzka. Hey, man, I know you've been coaching a lot of college baseball as of late. You've been teaching every day. It's been hard for us to get together and get this thing going, but we're going to get to we're going to try to get to this a couple of times a week at least and get back after it now that it's baseball season, it's spring sports season. Basketball is in real heavy roll and they're starting to play a little bit better. I know they lost Saturday, but Chase, how you been? Man, I've been really busy um, from <laughs> <laughs> uh, since the since the end of football season, you know, I got married we started uh, we started our baseball season um we're moving again um here within the next week so um life's been pretty crazy but it's it's been pretty good well what'd you think about the bedlam basketball game saturday obviously osu's been playing a lot better lately they went on the road and beat west virginia or excuse me cincinnati they beat west virginia at home so they had had they had had some good games and it looked like for all the world they had ou beat almost the entire game look like javon small if he makes a free throw you probably win that game then again in overtime you have the lead and and you play great defense and a guy just hits a a miraculous shot so what do you think about bedlam basketball that was a really fun game to watch. You know, I was I was watching it. I was as I was also watching my, my brother play. Um, so I was up in Enid watching him uh, watching him pitch and and uh, play a little bit. And and uh, I also had the game pulled up on my phone. And I was pretty confident, you know. And and then uh, we miss a free throw, and then you go into overtime, and you still feel you know pretty comfortable. And then he hits a a, a shot that will not be made very often. No. Um, so it was a, it was an unfortunate way to lose, but at the same time, you know, it was it was promising to see them play as well as they did. I would agree with that. So just kind of give me your overall thoughts on on your the basketball season for you and what you've thought about it. Um, it, it has its ups and downs. You know, I I, I think that with the talent and um, ability of the players and whatnot, I think be a little bit more success. Um, and I think that. Uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Coach Boynton in, in terms of, you know, he's really, really, really good with uh, students. He's really good with, um, you know, showing up and, and just making it, making his presence known on campus. Um, you know, and I, as a student there not too long ago, you know, I'd see him, you know, in the um, student union. Thank you. I'm sorry. You know, it's been a, it's been a couple been a couple of years. Uh, I'd see him in the union all the time. And he's always talking to people, smiling, having a good time. And and uh, I've had interactions with him out, outside of that as well. And he's always been super nice and, and super, um, you know, relatable and, and a super good guy. Um, you know, I, I, I think that um, I think that he does a lot of good things. Um, but at the same time, I think there could be a little bit more improvement on the uh, in you could see a little bit more success on the on the end of you know wins and losses. Bottom line is, you get paid a lot of money to be a Division One coach at any level or any sport. You get paid that money for results, correct? I mean, so no matter how much you like Mike Boynton, no matter how much you like him as a person, it always has to come back to results, though, does it not? It does. That's, I mean, that's just that's college athletics. It absolutely is. And those, those guys know, hey, whenever you take this job and you get paid millions of dollars and you do this, that's kind of the situation. But, hey, let's talk about the upside of this basketball program. I know this year has been tough. I, it was just, I was super proud of the fans. They showed up Saturday, who you're seeing right here on the screen, is Eric Daly Jr. The young kids in this group, and I know OSU fans are tired of hearing, hey, our basketball team's young, got to give them time to develop. It seems like it's been that for the entire tenure of Mike Boynton, but I think this is easily the best young class that he's had. We're looking at Eric Daly on the screen right now. Um, all, all together, I would agree, you know, absolutely. And and one thing that I do love about Boynton is, is the the uh, the talent that he brings in um, to, to Stillwater is a talent that not any other sport has brought in in terms of stars and, and um, you know, just overall upside and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, he, he has a way with players. I mean, he has a way of, you know, getting them to Stillwater um you know all like i said all together this is a, this freshman class is really 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 good you know and, and if he can the hard part is going to keep them is going to be to keep them to stay um in terms of you know there's going to be nil things and in uh in talks and there's there's going to be a whole lot of 
situations that there used to not be um, because of the money situation and whatnot. You know, players are always looking to get paid, and and you can't blame them. You know, they're eighteen to the twenty one, twenty two years old. You know, and it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty well known that college students are are not the wealthiest. Um, so you can't you can't blame them for that. But at the same time, you know, if if he can keep these guys around, I think they're going to be really good here in a, a year or two. I think if Oklahoma State fans would pack out Gallagher Iber Arena like they did on Saturday, I think that would go a long ways to wanting to keep these guys. And you're seeing right now, you're seeing Jamiron Keller right here on the screen. He is simply fantastic. He's come on the screen. So when you look at Brandon Garrison, Eric Daly Jr., Keon Williams is just a sophomore, Jamiron Keller, and all of these young guys, man, I mean, this is really a nucleus that if Oklahoma State fans – would just see the future of this and get behind them. You saw what the crowd can do for them yesterday, and who's to say this isn't a group that couldn't win four or five in a row down the stretch here? I know it'd be tough, or maybe get on a roll in the Big 12 tournament. We've seen teams before not really be all that fired up about winning a million games in that tournament because they would rather just get ready and save all of their energy for the NCAA tournament. So I think if Oklahoma State fans would get behind this team and create environments like Saturday – that would entice some of these guys to want to stay in Stillwater. Yeah, no, I would agree. I, I think the attendance attendance has a lot to do with things. You know, we, we talked about it during football season. With it was constantly packed. You, everybody was constantly packing out Boone Pickens, um, and and the the football team fed off that. Even Coach Gundy said it himself. You know, the the environments have helped us be successful. There hasn't been a a very good environment throughout the entire basketball season until Saturday, until Bedlam. And you saw the upside and you saw the talent of this team and you saw them play up to the to their capability um, for the most part. You know, that sure, there were shots missed and whatever, but uh, that's basketball for you. Um, you know, and, and I think that, again, you know, if, if you pack out that stadium, just like you're saying, the players are going to feed off that. And one thing that I do love is how excited Boynton gets in – those big circumstances and those big games and stuff, you know, you saw him at the end of the fourth quarter, he was, you know, waving around his, <laughs> his orange, uh, his orange sport coat. Um, you know, I mean that, that's, a, that's a guy that players like to play for. Um, but that's also an environment that players love to play in. Um, so if there's some consistency there, uh, I would agree that, that people will want to stay. No doubt about that. Okay, baseball had a, a good weekend. I had a really rough weekend to start with Sam Houston. Lost the first two games of that. Had a good weekend this last weekend. They beat Michigan on Friday. And then they're just the crazy game Saturday night against Oregon State. That was, Excuse me, not Oregon State. They played them tonight on Sunday. Baseball, man, he plays so many games, they just all start running together. But Saturday <laughs> night was against number two, Arkansas. It was a pitcher's duel. The, the Cowboys finally scratched. In the ninth inning, they walked off Arkansas in the ninth. Umpire wouldn't call a pitch that should have been a walk-off to Lane Forsyth, a ball like he should have. So it went extra innings and then eventually got the walk-off suicide squeeze. So what did you think about the baseball team this weekend? Uh, it was a phenomenal weekend. It was a great way to bounce back after, you know, last week uh, losing losing two out of three to Sam Houston. Uh, one thing that I will say is – College, and especially in Division One college baseball, Sam Houston had really good arms. They have really good talent, and, and it doesn't care if you're wearing Oklahoma State on your uniform. It doesn't matter if you're wearing Vanderbilt. You could go into an environment like that and easily lose two out of three if you don't play up to your capability, um, which is what happened that first week. And then they bounce back. Um, I have a really good win against Michigan, a fantastic win um, last night against Arkansas. Um, and, you know, then – we had a rough one today against Oregon State, but um, you I know, think that it, was to be expected after last night's game, I and mean, that was a crazy game. Yeah, I mean, and and what people don't realize, and maybe people do realize this, is the amount of energy that that takes, not yeah. only from emotional each player, um, but each guy, even in the dugout. You know, just to creating a, an, an upbeat environment and lasting, keeping that. Um, keeping that fire and keeping that focus um, and, and that mental stability over 14 innings is extremely hard to do. And then to, to wake up, you know, and, and show back up at the field less than, you know, less than 24 hours later and, and play another, I think Oregon state was number seven in the nation. Yeah. Um, they were good. You know, that, I mean, 
that's extremely hard to do. Um, but one thing that I do want to point out that I was thinking about last night as I was watching the the uh, Oklahoma State and, and Arkansas game was how many Oklahoma high school baseball players were represented throughout that night um just just between those two squads and and, and oklahoma state obviously is a national brand in baseball as, as well as arkansas um and i couldn't tell you you'll probably have to count them on two hands the number of oklahoma kids that, that is a base hit to right center um so that if that doesn't tell you about how good oklahoma high school talent in, in terms of baseball is I, I don't know what will um but that was cool for me to see for sure yeah, what were your impressions of the the Arkansas game? I mean, it, the, all the strikeouts, and then it was an exciting game. So just kind of give us your overall impression as to what you thought about, what you think about this team, where you think they're at, and, and the talent level for the Oklahoma State baseball team 2024. Yeah, I think it's a lot like the, the, the basketball team. You know, they are a very, very young group. Um, you're seeing a lot of freshmen play. Uh, Avery Ortiz is playing. Uh, Colin Ritchie's playing. Mm-hmm. Um there's a lot of freshmen that are playing. Um, and, and once you get up to that level, it is a completely different game than high school. You know, it is very rare to see a freshman baseball player come in and be successful, especially within this first three, four, five weeks of the season. You know, it takes a long time for them to settle in, catch up to the speed of the game. The The mental aspect of the game changes a lot. Um, the speed of the game changes a lot. The environments, there, there's a whole lot of things that go into it. Um, so I think that you will, you will start to see success the further on you get into the season. And that is because of, of the, the youth of, of the roster. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys are going to start getting comfortable. They're going to, the other thing you have to think about is chemistry. You know, a lot of these guys haven't played with each other. Um, so they're still getting to know each other and, and get comfortable with each other. You lose a ton of guys, um, this last year, you lost Mendham, you lost, uh, Sh- uh, not Schubert. I'm sorry. Uh, Nolan, other Nolan McLean. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you lose McLean. You, you lose a ton of guys, uh, Riggio, um, Marcus, Marcus Brown. Brown. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on, you know, and that, and that's your middle infield. So you sure. lose your middle infield, which is huge. Um, you lose your first baseman, you lose a, a pitcher and a, and a guy that hits really well for you in the outfield, um, plays a little bit of third base, um, in McLean, you know, you, you lose a lot. Um, so you have to, you know, you, you have to recover, you have to bounce back, you have to replace. Um, and, and that's a really, really hard thing to do. It absolutely is. This Oklahoma State team pitching-wise, I thought Brian Holiday looked really good. So it's a team, the Jansen Kiesel, he can reach 95-96. Evan O'Toole came in relief today. Then you also have Drew Blake. So the pitching staff, I mean, where, where are we at pitching-wise? It doesn't seem like, you know, in the past, Oklahoma State's had the Justin Robleskis. They've had the Noel McClain's guys that they could bring in that were just pumping, you know, 95-96, 97-98. Doesn't seem like you have quite the ceiling of pitchers this year, but but again, a, a good group though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got a you got Gabe Davis, who you know he's every bit of six 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 seven six eight. A heck, I don't know how tall he is, um, but he his his velo is extremely high. Um, the job that he did last night uh, as a relief pitcher coming in and throwing more pitches than the more pitches than the starter. I think he threw eighty four pitches last night. Um, that is a, that is a tall task, especially for a sophomore uh, relief guy who probably hasn't trained all the way throughout the season. Know that knowing that he's going to be a pin guy, I, that's probably the most pitches he's thrown. Yeah, all season, whether it be bullpens, live you know live abs, whatever. Um, you know they they try to simulate games in those bullpens and whatnot. And for him, he's he's a middle late re- late relief guy. So you know his pitch counts maybe. 60 pitches or so at max comes out and just absolutely shoves for 85, 84 pitches or whatever it is. Uh, I thought that was extremely impressive. Um, you know, but the first week I was, I was kind of concerned about the pitching staff. I think they looked a lot better this week than they did, than they did against Sam Houston. Um, and they played a lot better talent than they did, um, against Sam Houston. So I, I don't know if it was just, you know, the, the opening weekend, Josh's uh, teams have always been like that. Yeah. <laughs> early, especially. Yeah, and like I said, Sam Sam Houston, you they're like, oh, we got Oklahoma State coming to town. You know, that's that's huge for us um, in, in Oklahoma State. I mean, I'm not saying that this was the mentality, but they're like, we have a huge weekend coming up in the next weekend facing Michigan, Oregon State. I know I'm not I'm not saying that they were looking ahead, but maybe that was maybe that was the case because I think you see 
or you saw a totally different team this week than you did last after uh, not counting not counting Sunday when they put up 19 runs or whatever it was. 25 strikeouts Saturday. I know it was an exciting game. It was a great win for the Cowboys, but man, what the 25 strikeouts, that's got to get fixed, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, and in, in, in <laughs> to put that in perspective, that's that's over eight innings of outs in strikeouts. That's in one game. That's in Saturday. That's just Saturday's yeah. game. Yeah, that's over eight innings of strikeouts. Um, and Arkansas's pitchers were really good. The and I'm not one to blame the umpire, but that guy was really really bad. Um, but at the same time, if he's going to suck consist like consistently, you know, if he's going to be really bad consistently you got to find a way to at least foul it off or make some kind of adjustment. You know, if you, it, it's a totally different situation. I couldn't tell you how many times they struck out looking. There was a lot of striking out looking, you know, at least fling your bat out there and, and at least try to get a piece of it. I know that the situation was tough and you're facing good pitchers and you're, you're getting screwed from the guy behind you. Um, but you know, at the same time, you can't have 25 strikeouts and I know they won, but you can't expect to win that game. I would agree. Have you ever seen a, a walk off suicide squeeze? Uh, no, I haven't. No, I have was really all fun. my years. I don't think I've ever. I've seen suicide squeezes. I've seen walk offs. Not sure I've ever seen a walk off suicide squeeze. That was cool. Lane was Forsythe, by the fun. way, he's a good ball player. Yeah, yeah, no, and you know I, that that part of the game really, really gets overlooked. The bunting game gets really overlooked. Um, you know, and in, and in, in the fact that that. Coach Holiday had confidence, enough confidence in his guy at the plate um, to do a job like that. It, I think that speaks volumes. Um, that that's a tough situation to be in. You're facing a really good left-handed pitcher, um, and, and Colin Fisher. Uh, you know, I I think overall that was that was a really cool way to end the game, in my opinion. And if the game had continued to go the way it was, they weren't going to hit him in. You know, that, that it just. I mean, simple as that. They they weren't going to get that run in had they continued to swing the bat. I feel like um, Oklahoma State or Arkansas. You know, it was going to be something like that that had to end the game. I would agree with that. It was a it was a great game to watch. If you're far as if you're a pitcher, it was one of those deals to where I know people complain to no end at the professional level when they put the the runner at second base in extra innings. I personally loved it because I can't tell you how many times being in the game that after you reach that ninth inning, it's just like – it's almost like the air just settles on everybody. You yeah. know, and a lot of times it does because it starts – the temperature starts dropping. You know, you won't play unless it's over 40 or whatever. Yeah. But then by the time it's the 10th inning, it's like 28 degrees. So a lot of times it's physically that actually does happen. But it's, I, I, it's hard to explain. It's almost like there's a blanket of air that just goes over both dugouts – and then the next thing you know, it's like the 15th inning. And you I know this game, neither team was scoring a lot. But even in games where, like, teams, it seems like you're scoring every inning, it's like the scoring just stops, right? Yeah. So uh, I like the fact that they put a guy at second base for the simple fact that it just seemed like within one or two innings, the game was over. And you had nine innings to figure out how to win the game. It's hard for, to, for me to say that you should be able to complain if you couldn't get it done in regulation. Yeah, no, I agree 100. percent I, I also I, I do like the uh, the guy on second base because um, you you don't run into situations like you do last night. Um, you know, and, and not as many, you're, right? You're playing 11 or 12 innings as opposed to 14, 15, 16, whatever. Um, I don't think if people don't realize unless they played the game, especially at the collegiate level, the the men like it's so taxing mentally. It, I mean, it's not only physically, but mentally, you know, you have to be thinking two pitches ahead. Uh, he hits the ball here. Where am I going to go? Where am I backing up? Where am I supposed to make my throw? Where's the runner? How fast is he? Uh, oh, let me look at, go ahead and look at my sheet. Where's this guy? Is he pool happy? Is he, is he hitting opposite field? There's so many things that go in, especially the college game that, you know, by the, by the end of that ninth inning, you're just you you felt like you've run a marathon and you know you, you get a brain fog and <laughs> you absolutely are fatigued too so it is a yeah. very difficult thing to do cowboys they got a huge win because when you look i mean i know josh and it's baseball and there's just so many equalizing factors that 
you know, Oklahoma State type teams lose to Sam Houston all the time at every single level. The best team in baseball this year at the major league level is going to lose like 60 times, and probably 10 or 15 of those are going to be like to the worst teams in the entire league. Yeah. So these types of losses early in the season, they're expected. Not only are they they not just – I mean, I, want to, I don't want to say they're acceptable, but not only should you not just you know overreact to them, you almost should come to expect at least one or two of these every single year unless you have uh, Robin Ventura – Keating Cavillia. I mean, those types of yeah. major league caliber type teams. Those are days of yore, though. I mean, everybody else is caught up and everybody else is different. I, I, I can't explain to people any – I mean, I try to explain that all the time that, yeah, there's a reason why Gary Ward got – I know his back was hurt, but, man, when they went into the Big 12, things changed. I mean, they were going to play Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Baylor, all these teams instead of Kansas State, Kansas, Iowa State – all the way until about 30 years ago had a team. And all the, it was going to be different. And then plus, when they added the Super Regional, that extra weekend, that was going to be big and different too. So, I mean, there was a stretch there where Oklahoma State would would dominate the Big 8. OU was really the only competition they had. And then they would go to a regional and, like, the best team in the regional might be a pretty good Wichita State team, something like that. And then you have a good weekend against Wichita State, and you're in, right? So college baseball, the entire landscape is different. It's a lot harder to do. And personally, I think Josh Holliday's done a really good job at Oklahoma State. Absolutely, yeah. And and one thing that, that people have to remember is this is not football season where you play 12, 13, 14, 15 games. You're playing 40-something yeah. games. So it's expected, like like you said, it's it's expected to have some some letdowns, you know. And the game of baseball is is beautiful the way that it is because an Oklahoma State can go lose to a Sam Houston and then turn back the next week and beat Arkansas. In football, or you know, I'll, I'll use football for example, Alabama's not going to roll. They're not going to go to, I don't even know, Middle Tennessee State and go lose a game. Now, I mean, it's just not going to happen, um, you know. And then Middle Tennessee State is not going to come down to Texas and go beat them. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Um, it's it's a not whole, nearly as often. Right, 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 right. It's a whole different. It's a whole different game, you know. And it's it's a whole different. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. There, there's there's so many differences in, in, in losses are almost ex- they're expected in baseball. You'll never see a team go undefeated. Never, never, ever, ever. What type of season are you looking for, for this Oklahoma state baseball team? I mean, what, what you, you know, these kids as well as anybody, I mean, you know, them personally, you know, the type of talent, you know, the youth they have on this team. What can Oklahoma state fans you think realistically expect from this team? Doesn't seem my opinion. Doesn't seem like they have the higher ceiling. They don't have the, Christian and Carson type, the Carson McCusker type, even the, the the Cabinus or the Boone, doesn't seem like that, or the Tank, doesn't seem like they have that top end type of of overall talent this year to me. Am I no, off there? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I and I I think that like I said, you're going to see improvements with these guys as they catch up. And knowing the like like you said, knowing these guys personally, they're going to catch up quick because they were really really good in high school. Talking about the freshmen. Um, you know, I, I think that um, you give them a few weeks, and I think you're really going to see I, probably by OU here in a couple of weeks when they go down to Norman, you're probably going to get a better taste and a better feel as to what the season is going to go like. I would say you can expect them to go. They're going to go to a regional. I don't think they're going to host. Um, I think they're going to go to, <laughs> to a, a – <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I, I, I don't – they're going to go to a tough regional. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't think they're going to go to a barbecue or, or whatever. Um, I think that they'll put up a fight. I think that they can get to the regional final. Um, and then it's going to come down to, you know, where, where are bullpens at? Where, where's your arms? Where's your pitch? And, um, and right now that's a little concerning. Um, so, so I'm not saying they're not going to make a super, but I'm saying that if they do make a super, that's a, that's a heck of a season for them. That would be, and that that's something that has eluded Oklahoma State actually here as of late since 2019. I was actually in Lubbock for that Texas, Texas Tech Super Regional. Golly, man, Oklahoma State had the lead. 
They were in the eighth inning. They had all the momentum. They were about five outs away from making the College World Series. And then dang it, if Texas Tech didn't come back and win that game. I've actually talked to a couple of the guys on that Texas Tech team who are Dodgers now on my Dodgers daily end of things. So, man, that was an amazing run there. But, yeah, no, probably, you know, the Super Regional this year would be, I think that would probably be something that, that might be a little bit of a an overachievement for this baseball team, just kind of looking at, at the youth that's on it and, and where it's at at this moment. But, hey, final thoughts, basketball, baseball, softball, anything going on Oklahoma State? Man, I, I, I just think there's a lot to look forward to. You know, I think that there's a lot of upside. And and uh, one thing that I am really excited about is, is the softball team looks extremely yeah. good. Um, as always, you know, Coach Gajewski's doing a great job and, and has done a great job in, in terms of, you know, bringing, pr- putting Oklahoma State as, as one of the, you know, the top contenders con- consistently. Um, you know, they're constantly in the top 10, uh, a top 10, top 10 teams in the nation. Um, and, and it's hard when you got who you have down the street, um, but they're, you know, they're continuing to compete. They're continuing to be successful. I think that he's doing a fantastic job. Um, I think that Coach Holiday is doing a great job. Um, you know, I, I, there, I'm really excited. There's a lot to look forward to this, this spring in terms of athletics. I would totally agree with that. And the thing about that, as you mentioned, OU and softball and how great they are, you only have to worry about them one more year, and that's this year. So what are your thoughts on Bedlam? The last bedlam, I mean, was there any emotional attachment for you to that? Believe it or not, I mean, I grew up in Stillwater. I'm diehard. I, I hate OU more than anybody else. <laughs> there really was no emotional attachment to not playing OU anymore just because I'm just tired of playing them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I don't I don't know. Um, for me, it's, it's a little weird because – I grew up in an OU house, like my all my whole family's OU fans. Um, I, I I became an OSU fan a little bit later, um, so for me, I've gotten to see both sides of the rivalry. I've gotten to experience both sides of the rivalry. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm forever gonna rip the orange and black is all I'm gonna wear from now on. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, you know, but at the same time, it, there, there's just there's so much history and there's so much. Um, you know, there's, there's so many ups and there's so many downs for both, for both, uh, universities, um, and, and playing each other and stuff like that. I, I don't think you're going to see it go away. Um, I think that they're going to find a way to in, in baseball season, they're, they're going to play a midweek game, um, just like they do every year in softball. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if they face off once or twice every, every year. Um, and then you can, if they continue, I want to knock on wood when I say this, but they'll see each other in the college, the women's college world series softball team will, um, the basketball team. I'm sure they'll find a way to schedule each other sometime because you get environments like you do last Saturday, um, when you have bedlam and, and, and it's great, not only for the players, um, and the fans, but it's also great for the city, whichever city it's in, whether it be Stillwater or Norman, economically it does a really good thing for them because it brings a lot of people that are not from Norman or not from Stillwater to one of those locations. So, you know, it, it, it just makes sense to continue to find a way to play each other, even though they're both not in the big 12. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. It's been a whole lot of fun getting back into this podcast, Chase. Thank you so much for joining and go pokes.